My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. One of the newer saints in the church is Blessed Alvaro de Portillo, who was beatified by Pope Francis in 2014. Bishop Alvaro was the first successor to Saint Jose Maria at the head of Opus Dei. And in his life, there's a very interesting episode when he was a young man, an adolescent, which we can use to begin our time of prayer. This is from his biography. Precisely in La Isla, a town on the Asturian coast of Spain, a providential event occurred. Alvaro and his brother had arranged to go out with some friends on an excursion. They thought of making a motorboat trip to Via Viciosa or Ribel de Sella on the Atlantic Ocean. Immediately before setting sail, when they were already on board, his brother told him that he needed to stay on land because he wasn't feeling well. So Alvaro decided to accompany him and not join the sea expedition. A few hours later, without prior notice, a tremendous gale was unleashed in that coastal area and the boat was shipwrecked. All the crew members of the small boat drowned, except one, the youngest, who managed to reach the shore despite the swell. As he battled the waves, he vowed that if he did not die, he would give his life to the Lord. He reached some rocks and was saved. His hair had turned completely white from the trauma. Soon after that, he entered the convent of Val de Dios, so he became a monk. Later, the young Alvaro would affirm that this event had made him think that our Lord had left him alive because he had something in mind for him. We can imagine Alvaro and his brother receiving this news of the shipwreck and Alvaro becoming very pensive and thinking this very supernatural thought that you, Jesus, had left him alive for a reason because you had something in mind for him. Already Alvaro was thinking about his vocation. In today's gospel, we are presented with one of your parables, Jesus, specifically from the gospel of Matthew. And many of the parables in Matthew's gospel make reference to the kingdom of heaven and what it is compared to. And so the parables begin with the kingdom of heaven will be like dot, 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 the laborers in the vineyard, or the servants with the talents, or the situation of the wise and foolish virgins, which is what we are reading today. And all of these parables, they seem to do, or they seem to have to do with time, with the way in which each person uses the time that they are given, either wisely or foolishly. And so we can begin our 10 minutes of prayer, our 10 minutes with you, Jesus, giving thanks for the time that we have been given and the time that we hope to receive. And we ask you, Jesus, that we might use this time wisely, that our time is precious, right? Like Don Alvaro said, our Lord has kept me alive because he has something in mind for me. And so we read the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. Jesus told his disciples this parable, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. 
since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. And so there is the situation. They're ready to go, these virgins, these bridesmaids of the wedding. They're ready to receive the groom and introduce, her, introduce him to the bride. But the groom's arrival is delayed. And this is a similar theme that we see in other parables, much like the return of the master who has gone away on a trip. His return is long in coming. He tells the servants, trade until I come. But they don't know when he's going to come. They don't know when he's going to return. And his return seems delayed. Or the payment of wages to those servants in the vineyard. It's at the very end of a long day when evening came. Well, so too here. The groom's arrival is delayed, and these women inevitably get drowsy because it gets closer and closer to to midnight. It makes sense that they would, as the night gets later and later. It says they all slumbered and slept. The problem is not drowsy virgins versus alert virgins. No, it's between the foolish and the wise. The problem is not so much their sleepiness per se, but their lack of preparation, their lack of use of the resources given to them. Some of the women had stocked up on oil and the others had squandered it or forgotten about it. And so the inevitable situation happens given all that we know. At midnight, there was a cry, behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may, there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. And then the door was locked. And those foolish virgins are left out. They're, they're left outside. They're not able to enter the wedding feast. When we think of this oil, we should compare it to time. Time is the resource given to each one of us, regardless of our talents. The parables are all about time. It's the space that each of us is given, this margin or period of time to invest in. I remember when I was in seminary in Rome, I lived with a guy from El Salvador, but he went to a Canadian uh, international school in El Salvador. And so his English was impeccable. He spoke a beautiful um, Canadian American English. And uh, he had all these really funny phrases that he had learned growing up when he was in school. And he used to say to me, you know, Time is money, and money is money, <laughs> which is very much kind of like the mentality of a businessman, right? Time is for making money. Well, St. Josemaria would change that. He would say, time is a treasure. It's a treasure that is to be used wisely. Time is glory, glory that we give to God or that we rob from him. And so we should consider whether we carry our time as a treasure, whether we make the best use of it, because the time for loving is brief and it can be, our time can be cherished and used to our advantage, just like those wise virgins that carry their oil in flasks, or time can be squandered. It can be wasted when the current prelate of Opus Dei, Fernando Ocaris, uh, was invited, I think it was his first trip as prelate uh, outside of Italy, he went to Brazil and they invited him uh, to a get together where they sang a song with the repeated refrain, the time for loving is brief. The time for loving is brief. And after listening to the song, he commented, the time for loving is brief. We need to take advantage of time. And taking advantage of time 
means filling it with love for God and as a result, service to others. Jesus, we don't know how much time you want to give each one of us. And we ask you that you might help us to fill it all with love for you and love for each other. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.